If you guys want to buy or sell a home in Las Vegas, you got to watch this video. Stay tuned. What's going on my YouTube friends? This is Jerry Abbott, your favorite Las Vegas realtor. Hey guys, three quick things before we dive into the video. Number one, if this is your first time on the channel and you wanna learn everything there is to know about the Las Vegas real estate market, then definitely subscribe down below. Number two, if you could give me a thumbs up like down there as well, that would really help the channel out. And number three guys, if you're thinking about relocating to beautiful Las Vegas, you know I've got your back. I'm a local realtor here. I've lived here for nearly 20 years. Just call, text, or email me anytime and I'll help you find that perfect dream home. Let's dive into the video. Okay guys, before we actually dive into the real meat and potatoes of this video, I wanna call this part of the video, Stop the Madness. And the reason why I wanna call it Stop the Madness is, I want you guys to take a look at some of the emails and texts that I've gotten from people who have reached out to me on my YouTube channel, talking to me about potentially buying a home in Las Vegas. You can see here on camera exactly what I'm talking about. So this first one says, hi Jerry, thanks for reaching out. We've decided to hold off for a couple of months, counting on prices to drop. This next one says, yikes on market and timing. Monthly payments just jumped by four to $800 a month and will keep climbing. Gonna pause and watch this summer for the eventual housing blowouts, then do cash instead of financing. And this last one says, I chatted with Judy and we are going to just rent for now and maybe buy something next year. So I just wanted to show you guys a few examples of the dozens of text messages and emails that I receive from potential clients all the time. I understand people are a little bit hesitant because it is a big purchase. Sometimes it's the biggest purchase of people's lives. It usually is. But a lot of times people think they know more than what the market is really saying. And the problem is, is that someone like myself, who's a realtor who studies this every single day, is seeing people react in a very kind of knee jerk reaction way, thinking, oh, interest rates are going up, so we're gonna put the brakes on it. Oh, the market's been going up for too long, the market's going to crash. That's not going to happen, I'm gonna tell you why. So here's the problem guys, with all of these predictions from all of these companies talking about where the real estate market is going, whether it's on a national level or whether it's based here in Las Vegas, you've got companies like Zillow, as you see here on this on-screen graphic that was predicting at the beginning of this year, a 16% price appreciation. Now, I don't know where they get these kinds of numbers. That might happen, that may not happen, but then a couple of months later, interest rates go up, the stock market goes down, and now you get an article like this, talking about a housing market crash. Then, because interest rates have been the talk of the town, you see that some companies are writing articles talking about the fact that interest rates are going up and it might cool off the market, but a crash may be unlikely. The problem with all of these things is nobody really knows what's going to happen in a specific market unless you really study that market. So what I've been doing as a realtor here in Las Vegas is I've really dug in deep to see the numbers here to show you guys exactly what the best predictive analysis is, and I'm gonna show you that right now. Okay guys, so what I wanna do now is I wanna drill down specifically into the Las Vegas real estate market. And I wanna show you three specific graphics to talk to you about what's going on here in terms of real estate. So let's take a look at that first graphic. All right, so let's take a look at this on-screen graphic, guys. This right here talks about the average median home price appreciation in the past year in Las Vegas. So if you look down at that red box that I highlighted on the screen, that's what the average home price was back in March of 2021, about $365,000. Now over to the right, you see the larger red box. That's currently $465,000 as an average median home price here in Vegas. So you can see that red arrow keeps going all the way up to the right because homes have appreciated about 30% in the past year here. All right, so this next on-screen graphic now shows the declining inventory in the last year. I want you to look in the middle of the picture there and take a look at October of 2021, where there was about 3,500 homes for sale. That was the inventory about six months ago here in Las Vegas. Now you can see with that downward arrow all the way down to the bottom right, there's just over 1,900 homes in Las Vegas for sale, which means the inventory has declined tremendously. That's a very important factor because when inventory declines that significantly, that means that we basically have very few homes for sale here compared to an average time where we might have 3,500 or 4,500, which is typical. This now is less than 2,000. So you can see that the declining inventory correlates with the prices that were going up in the previous graphic. So you guys can see that this graphic goes up to March of 2022. Now I'm filming this in May of 2022. So what about April? We'll take a look at this graphic guys. These are the April statistics now that they've just come in. 
It is $475,000 as an average price point here in Las Vegas. So March, it was at 465 and now it's crept up to 475. So the upward trajectory keeps happening here in Las Vegas. It's not going down. It's not even stagnating. It is absolutely going up month by month. Okay, so let me recap what I just showed you guys. Those three graphics indicate something very specific that a lot of people are not privy to unless they really know the numbers here in Las Vegas. When the prices continue to go up, it's because of a housing supply shortage. So the first graphic was how the prices kept going up. Now, the second graphic was how inventory keeps going down. When inventory is at record lows like this, even if interest rates are rising, the home prices here are either gonna keep appreciating or they might be a little bit stagnant. They are definitely not going down and we are certainly not going to crash. And the reason for it is there's just not enough inventory on the market to meet demand. All right, so let's talk about the elephant in the room. Everyone now is talking about interest rates and how they're going through the roof. So let's talk about that for a second. As you can see here on screen, the Fed just raised rates again to some of the highest levels that's happened in the last decade. And the reason why they're doing that is because we have hyperinflation. And the hyperinflation was caused by the trillions of dollars that were printed by the Fed. So to curtail the hyperinflation, the Fed has to raise interest rates. The problem is, Secretly, they're panicking because they're trying to raise rates without going too fast because if you raise interest rates too quickly, you're gonna cause a recession. But they really have no choice because inflation is completely out of control. And what I want you to do is I wanna show you exactly what's happening by taking a look at this graphic here on screen. At the beginning of this year, about December or January of this year, the average 30-year mortgage rate was about 3.1%. So if you had a half a million dollar mortgage, as you can see here, the way I highlighted that with the red lines at the top of the graphic, you can see that at a 3.1%, if you had a half a million dollar mortgage, your principal and interest payment would be about $2,100 a month. Well, fast forward till now into the May time period, and now the average interest rate is 5.27%. So that same exact mortgage of about a half a million dollars, instead of it being about $2,100, is closer to $2,800. So that's a significant difference. But here's the faulty logic, guys, that a lot of people are not getting right. There's two parts of this equation. Number one, obviously interest rates are going up. So what that typically means is interest rates are higher, means your mortgage payment's gonna be higher, so less people are gonna be applying for a mortgage, which ultimately cools down the housing market. And that is the tipping point that usually does that. But here's the other part of the equation that changes all of that. It's the record low inventory. Low inventory, especially record low inventory, is the ultimate driver of where prices are going to be. So because prices keep going up, that's because there is record low inventory. So it doesn't matter, even if the interest rates are going up, because record low inventory is still sustaining itself, these prices are gonna sustain or go higher. They are not gonna come down anytime soon. Now here's something else I wanna show you guys. A lot of people don't know about this. Take a look at this graphic. This is what's called the rate lock-in effect. So what happened is, during the low, low interest rates, the record low interest rates from about six months or so ago, a lot of people bought homes and locked in very low interest rates, some of them even below 3%. So now what happens is, they have a great low interest rate, they're in their house, and if they sell their house right now, guess what happens? They might make some money because they probably built up some equity, but then when they go buy a house and they go finance the new house, they're gonna be at a definite higher rate. So the homeowners now feel somewhat imprisoned in their own homes because they've locked in such a low rate. So what does that mean? That means there's gonna be less sellers looking to sell their home, which again, contributes to the record low inventory. All right, so I don't mean to sound like a broken record, guys, but like I showed you earlier in the video, there's a lot of people reaching out to me telling me that they wanna sit on the sidelines maybe for the rest of the year. That's fine, people can do whatever they want. I'm not forcing anybody to buy or sell anything. I'm just trying to give you guys as much information and knowledge as possible about the Las Vegas real estate market. But let me just tell you one other quick thing, guys. I've been talking to potential clients that said the same thing to me a year ago, or even two years ago when the pandemic started. And if they had bought back then, compared to where prices are now, they would have made 50, 60% in price appreciation, but they've been sitting on the sidelines because of the same exact fear and the same exact thought that a lot of people have. They're afraid to jump in, they think things are gonna crash, and again, that's just faulty logic. All right, so let me give you four separate reasons as to why you should buy a home here in Las Vegas. And this is aside from the fact that we have 
unbelievable year-round weather. We have some of the lowest property taxes. We have no state income tax. We have the best entertainment. We have great outdoor activities. We have major sports teams here. The list goes on and on, but let me give you four specific reasons, starting with the first one. So the first reason as to why you should buy a home here in Las Vegas goes back to what I said earlier in the video. You saw about a year ago, the average price point in that graphic showed about $365,000 as the average price point. A year later, $475,000 now is the average price point. So you can see it's about a 30% price appreciation just in the past year. Now that's still relatively inexpensive compared to major metropolitan cities like Los Angeles or San Francisco or Seattle, Boston, New York. So it's still very affordable here. And the other thing I wanna tell you guys is that if you take a look at this on-screen graphic, let's say your window is about seven to 10 years, which is the average time a person owns a home. Take a look at that graphic, guys. The average home price has tripled in Las Vegas in just the past decade. So if you're looking to buy a home and you wanna sit tight for about seven to 10 years and you wanna park your money here while building equity in a property, Las Vegas is historically a great place to buy a home. So the second reason as to why you should buy a home in Las Vegas sooner rather than later is because interest rates continue to go up and they likely will go up a little bit more as we go through the rest of the year. Now, going back to what I just said in the previous clip, home prices obviously in the last year have gone up tremendously in Las Vegas, but now interest rates are going up too. So the longer that you guys sit on the sidelines, the more unfavorable the situation becomes because home prices get more expensive and then the interest rates go up, which makes the mortgage payments more expensive. But right now, at this time frame, home prices here, like I said in the previous clip, are still relatively inexpensive compared to some other major metro cities in the country. And even though we're not at record low interest rates at three or 4%, Getting an interest rate at about five or 6% is still pretty good. So the faster you can get into the game and buy a home here that's affordable in Las Vegas and get a good interest rate is a great thing to do with your money. So the third reason as to why you wanna own a home, especially in Las Vegas, is because you wanna build equity in a property and see it appreciate over time rather than renting every month and just throwing your money away. And as you can see here on screen, in the top 50 markets in the United States, it's always cheaper to own a home rather than to rent. And also, as you can see here on screen, the key to wealth creation for most American families is home ownership. Now in Las Vegas, especially where home prices are still relatively inexpensive, this is a great city to buy a home because over time the home will appreciate and you will build equity. And that is the key to future wealth for most American families. So the fourth and final reason as to why you should buy a home, especially in Las Vegas, is for something called a 1031 rollover. And what that means is, let's just say you live in Los Angeles and you have a property there that you've lived in for more than two years and you've built up a nice amount of equity and you wanna sell it. You sell that property and then you identify a property in a place like Las Vegas within 45 days. Now in Los Angeles, your dollar is not gonna go as far as it is going to go in Las Vegas. So you sell your property in Los Angeles, you take the money, you roll it into your Las Vegas property, and by rolling it in within 45 days of identifying a property here, you do not pay any capital gains. So that's a great tax savings for people that have a property elsewhere, and they wanna roll it over into a place like Las Vegas where your dollar goes further, and you save yourself all of those tax implications. Okay guys, so I can go over many reasons as to why you should buy a home in Las Vegas. Now, I am not trying to tell you guys what to do, but I do wanna give you this piece of information. There's an old expression, I've said this in previous videos and I'm gonna say it again. Time in the market is more important than timing the market. So what does that mean? That basically means it's kind of like the stock market. You're trying to time the stock. So if you buy a stock low, you want to sell it high. It's almost impossible to do that because again, nobody has a crystal ball. So time in the market, just being in the market and staying in the market is far more important than trying to time the market. And that goes for real estate as well. So let's say your window is a seven to 10 year window, which is the average time a person owns a home. So if you own a home for seven to 10 years in that window, rather than trying to time the highs and lows, if you just bought a property right now and you hung on to it for about 10 years, that home was most certainly going to appreciate. So that's something you really need to consider. If you're, whether you're moving to Las Vegas or any other part of the country, if your time horizon is like seven to 10 years in that kind of a range, that's the best thing to do is just to be in the market for a long period of time because historically properties are going to appreciate. 
So I hope you guys thought today's video was helpful. If you're thinking about relocating to beautiful Las Vegas, if you have any questions whatsoever about buying or selling a home here, you know I've got your back. I'm a local realtor here. I've lived here for nearly 20 years. I know every inch of this city. Just call, text, or email me anytime, and I'll help you guys find that perfect dream home. I'll see you guys in the next video.